Hey there, thanks for joining me today. This is JR from Trade Skillers Anonymous, and today we're gonna get into some CNC badassery. I'm gonna change out the standard 65 millimeter mount, which could accommodate a router or a 65 millimeter spindle, and we're gonna go a little bigger to an 80 millimeter mount here to accommodate a new spindle that I've got. I'm gonna go into how to do it real quick. I promise I'll make this quicker than the Johnny Depp trial is going. Uh, but I'll also tell you why I'm doing it, which is important. And so if you're considering a 65 or an 80 millimeter spindle and you're not sure which way to go, this video may help you. Um, thanks for watching. Let's get into it. This is my side view of my 65 millimeter spindle mount. What I want to draw your attention to is the underside of the Z motor and the up, upper portion of the spindle itself. What you're going to find is that because the 65 millimeter spindle is not, um, doesn't protrude out far enough, it actually creates an interference right here where I could get more travel out of the spindle itself, but the body of the spindle hits the underside of the Z mount. So at the time that I bought my Onefinity, uh, there was no 80 millimeter spindle mount available and not being very patient, you know, this, this was what was available at the time, so that's what I did, not realizing that it was going to limit the amount of, uh, you know, cutter space that I have. So this is all the way up on its travel. My collet is really about flush with the bottom of the Z slider. So if you put a bit in here, you, you've really lost some valuable uh, Z height when using a 65 millimeter spindle and it's simply because the interference that occurs right here. So if that didn't exist, I would be able to have more, uh, more positive Z travel. And that's the reason for this change. All right, and so again, as I mentioned, for the spindle change, or the spindle mount change, this really is what we're after is this piece here. It's in case, or you know, connected to the Z assembly itself. So what we're gonna do now, my VFD is not connected to any power. So I'm gonna disconnect that. I'm gonna dismount your spindle. And so you can see there's pretty good size difference between these two spindles. And the other benefit is um, this is gonna use an ER20 collet, which is much larger versus this ER11 call it. So I'm excited about that change as well. Okay, so just position your mount, uh, you know, your Z slider so that you can have access to the four bolts that you need. Now I have had this apart before and I can tell you that I put on some anti-seize, which I'll tell you, anytime you're putting a steel fastener into aluminum, you're gonna to wanna to consider doing the same. Okay. So, and again, this is, the, this is the only part that we're changing out of this whole assembly. So we're gonna go over to the bench and I'm gonna show you real quick how we do that. All right, so before we get going, again, I just want to remind you that this is what we're changing here. Uh, it is the uh, spindle mount itself. We're going to refer to this as the spindle carriage. And you really don't need very many special tools um, to get this done. And it shouldn't be as intimidating as maybe you uh, are concerned that it might be. So let's get into it. All right, just kidding. We just need a couple of Allen wrenches. So on this is the back. So this is what you would be seeing if you were standing in front of the machine. So we're just gonna flip this over. And hey, listen, if you're concerned about, um, you know, are, are you gonna get it back together exactly like it belongs? One thing that I like to do is take pictures of the project that you're about to take apart. Um, if you're worried about orientation, you know, is uh, which side is up, which side is left. Here you can see what I'm talking about with these dissimilar metals. You've got steel 
fasteners going into aluminum and they really start to seize up after a little while. Either that or they got some super strong people working at one infinity, which is probably the case. I'm sure they are. All right, so in my case, I'm just gonna keep this simple. I'm gonna take these off, lay them to the side. I know how I took them off. Um, I'm gonna pause the camera real quick, put a little anti-seize on these uh, fasteners before I forget to do it. Okay, so now at this point, I am gonna make one illustration. So this is what we would be seeing uh, from the backside. On the 65 millimeter spindle, you have bearings protruding on both the top and the bottom of this slider on the 80 millimeter the protrusion should be facing up towards the z motor so there's really only four screws left there are set screws that hold this well very firmly in place to the shaft you shouldn't have to take them all the way out just simply loosen their grip from the shaft feels like there's a good bit of loctite on there okay so that should i don't know if they're in a channel or or what they're not coming out just yet just spin these all the way out since I don't know shouldn't have needed to so we'll see <laughs> we're gonna need the monkey wrench after all Okay, so we just seized on there just a little bit. So there's a recess here for the bearing, but you'll also know that this is the bottom because there are two, looks like they're just capture screws to make sure that you insert that bracket too far upward. So now we just have two screws holding on this bearing here. Once these are loose, this should slide right out the bottom. Okay, so I'm expecting, yeah, it just slides right off. I'm gonna leave everything else just like it is. There's a little bit of schmoo that has developed on the bottom of those shafts. And it looks like I was given two new screws for this uh, drive nut that are considerably longer than the standard ones with the 65 millimeter mount so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the longer ones assuming that, um, that there's a reason for that so just sliding that up I'll do this backwards so the camera can see I'm just simply going to run these really long nuts or screws. Yeah, those are really long. And it's funny when you're doing this upside down for the camera. All right, so. Gave that the good backyard cleanup job. Oh yeah, 
slides on there nicer. And we're going to flip this guy over and put our bracket back on. Okay, that's the whole enchilada right there. So now all we need to do is remount this to the machine. We'll be all set. All right, so now what I hope to demonstrate here is that previously the 65 millimeter spindle would contact the underside of the Z motor. So the position of the spindle here would come up and was limiting the travel because it would interfere with the bottom of the uh, Z motor. So it's a little easier to demonstrate this before I mount the machine, this to the machine. But as you can see here, this 80 millimeter mount, let me get in the camera here, will completely miss the, mo the Z motor doesn't interfere so I will have more travel with this 80 millimeter and that's really the majority of the reason why I've done this All right, so it will be hard to see maybe from this view that you're on right now, but the top of this motor um, used to, on the 65 millimeter, used to be um, in a collision course with the bottom of the Z. And here you can see, previously I showed you that the collet nut on the 65 millimeter um, version, let me grab a tape measure. And now I've only put it on the, uh, middle holes just to get it stuck in there um, so that I could kind of demonstrate this here but I have just regained almost two inches of travel that on the 65 millimeter I was missing and that's the whole goal of this exercise I, I'll put it in I will have been running I guess in a picture-in-picture -picture environment um, cycling this up and down and showing you uh, pictures of the 65 millimeter just to show you the difference so a couple of benefits you know you've got the er20 collets here uh, which are you know bigger stronger collet um, this mount now clears the z motor and that was my my main driver so really really simple four bolts to get this off two bolts to get the spindle out eight bolts to get the brackets off and then four more bolts to get the uh this what am i trying to say the um, spindle mount out of the z slider so really simple process and uh, you know this might be something you need to think about if you're considering either a 65 or an 80 millimeter i would highly recommend just start out with the 80 millimeter because you'll save yourself that interference in your z travel hope this was helpful see you next time